Yet a she a kin the chini nishli do na kaidina e bashachin, Torichini dashach e do, Lizaklana dashinella, Crystal Sosi Nishia. Coming from Arizona, I have never had anyone doubt my Native American indigenous identity. Whether it's due to my dark hair, brown skin, supposedly high cheekbones, or really my unprecedented ability to inhale pieces of fry bread that my mother so lovingly prepared for me, I have had the privilege of never having anyone doubt this key central part of my identity. In the first 20 seconds, I introduce to you who I am in context of all those that came before me. I told you who my mother is, my entire matrilineage, my dad, all of those that came before him. I gave you my complete genealogy in just two short sentences. And that's a whole lot of Navajos. Let me tell you though, that it is not these stereotypical physical features that determine my nativeness. It is the culture and traditions imparted onto me by my family and ancestors. And this is where I realized that I am lucky. Because when I came to Tennessee, I realized that this is not the case for many people. Many people actually don't have this close connection to their Native American heritage. And just to let you know about the history of Tennessee, just know that several indigenous nations used to reside here, the same lands that Vanderbilt it sits right now, today. And in the mid 1800s, these indigenous nations were forcibly exiled during the Indian removal era to lands further west. Those that remained survived largely by integrating with people from outside cultures and communities. And what that means is that for many people, particularly for those that live in South and also Eastern portions of the United States, many people don't have a close connection to their indigenous past. I came here to Vanderbilt to pursue a PhD in genetics. And because of that, many people come up to me with this question in mind. Who am I? Really what they're asking is, who am I in context who is direct to consumer genetic test kit? Now you're probably familiar with the concept, you spend 100 to $200, you spit a whole lot of saliva, more than you ever thought you could ever produce in your entire life, and you mail it out, 30 days later you get a result, and that result is a percent estimation of your ancestral background. This question of who am I is so popular that 26 and a half million people have contributed their DNA to these companies since the beginning of this year alone. That's a whole lot of spit and a whole lot of DNA. And that question of who am I is actually mired in something else. Because according to Ancestry DNA, the number one question is why is it my Native American ancestry not showing up? Oh, okay. I only had 10 minutes, not 10 years, to unpack the assertiveness of that claim or to tell you how dangerous it is to equate indigeneity in a false way. That's not my point here. I'll leave that to Elizabeth Ward. But my point here is to try to get you to understand a little bit more about the biological underpinnings that are related to the indigenous biomarkers on this test. And hopefully you might be more informed about your own result. So let's start with a proverbial Indian Cherokee princess. So millions of people claim to have a Cherokee ancestor in their lineage. So we'll start there. We'll start with this one person with some amount of indigenous heritage who due to recent colonial factors likely outmarried. And as we know from high school biology, we only receive half of our information from each parrot. And that genetic material is recombined randomly during meiosis. And we really don't know which recombination block we're going to receive. For each subsequent generation, that recombination block represented here as red for native is going to get progressively smaller and smaller. So we're going to move from our great-grandmother to our grandmother, to our mother, 
And then, oh wait, our dad's side also contributes its own recombination blocks as well. And then we get to you, wonderful, magical you, represented here as a rhombus for biological male or female. Look how small that red segment is. And think back to a test that might be giving you a different than expected result. Part of the reason is that we have 3.2 billion base pairs in our genome. And for the most part, these tests aren't assaying all of those sites. They're only assaying certain sites or biomarkers that are related to ancestry. And what happens if those biomarkers don't have enough information to compare against indigenous groups? Then you might have a different than expected result. Going back to that question of who, why is my Native American ancestry not showing up? Part of it is due to limitations of the test and the test itself. Or you just may not be Native American. But that's a whole other case here. What I want to actually tell you now is why there are so few indigenous biomarkers to begin with. So let me just tell you a story of several hundred indigenous nations who went to the United Nations and asked for the cessation of these human genome diversity projects. What scientists were doing was helicoptering in, taking blood, and having people sign broad consent forms. Whether or not the people understood what the technical jargon is, the risks, or even the language of the document itself is unclear. But what is clear is that scientists were making promises to find cures to health problems that plagued those communities. And then they left. Think back to those 26 and a half million people who contributed their DNA to these companies. And just know that Ancestry DNA alone has been posting revenue for over a billion dollars for each of the holiday seasons since 2017. Think about who is truly benefiting here. Obviously, my point is not to tell you whether or not to contribute your DNA to these tests. I mean, that's your decision and your decision alone, but definitely make sure that it's an informed one. And definitely know that the indigenous biomarkers that come to contribute to these tests don't come from US groups. No, because they have largely declined to participate in genetic studies. Those indigenous biomarkers come from groups that are less protected. We also must look at the way that these tests are marketed. What these companies are promising is interchangeability between ancestral and personal identity. What they're doing is legitimizing and biologically reifying claims to indigeneity that really shouldn't be made claim, such claim to in such scientific fashion. We have to ask ourselves whether or not we are equating indigeneity with biology. Are we over-prioritizing ancestral claims to US tribes while also diminishing ancestral claims to groups south of the border? Are we allowing misunderstandings of this outside tool to usurp the right of indigenous tribes to define for themselves who their own members are? Native Americans have been defining who we are for time immemorial. And as Kim Tallbear, an indigenous scholar, reminds us, who we are is a construct of who claims us and the communities to which we belong. We are more than just one thing. We are many things. Our identities are complex and multifaceted, enriched by our personal experiences. That is a beautiful notion that shouldn't be reduced to biology. Who we are is more than what's in a test tube. Uh, yeah. 